May I also, on behalf of the Secretariat, welcome you brothers and sisters. And as uh, the late brother Malcolm will have said, friends and enemies. The road that we have treaded to reach here has not been an easy one. Despite all the good intentions that Presbyterian is holding, there have been, unfortunately, forces that have worked and continue to work that this Congress does not take place in this country. But I think we have to focus our attention on the central issue, the unity of our own people and the threat of recolonization that faces us and whatever program of action we can agree on on a minimum level. There could be 100 issues. Probably this Congress could only agree on 20. I think Africans must get out of the habit of defining ourselves in negative terms, anti this, anti that, without knowing what we are pro. <laughs> but these are challenges of organization. Because we are African people, does not mean that uh, about one billion of us should agree. But the emphasis at this Congress should be on what we agree on as opposed to what we may never agree on, because we share different ideological, political, personal, and class perspectives. But I think the African people face a crisis. We can agree from the extreme left to the fascist right. We can agree. And the fanatical center, we can agree you know, that Africa faces a crisis and it is the responsibility of African people to resolve those crises for themselves. So let's concentrate on those issues that unite us and those programs that we can take forward to fight this recolonization of the African continent and uh, 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 turning African people at home at, and abroad to that uh, objectionable sociological term of declassé elements. For the next five days, we'll be talking about the problems of Africa. One of it is technology. A great deal of it, and I'm glad that workshop on communication and the workshop on science and technology is taking place. Because in December, i give you as an example, in December when we rescheduled the Congress, it was very easy to sit brothers and sisters down in the office, ring the Caribbean, ring America, ring the rest of Europe, tell them the Congress was off. Getting through to Tanzania, we couldn't. And Tanzania is only next door. What is responsible for that? Underdevelopment, the technological aspect of underdevelopment. Uh, under Those are practical realities that our people face. And these practical realities defeat any semantic or rhetorical differences and sectarian differences that we may have amongst ourselves. It is those realities that we need to address ourselves to if we are serious about the liberation of this continent, if we are serious about preventing this ideology of so near yet so far that makes uh, 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 Tanzania unreachable, yet I could reach uh, 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 France and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and London and uh, New York. Many times, many of you sent faxes. You got through. Then, you say, the Secretariat is not responding to us. The Secretariat is not in a position to respond. Because it requires a full day to send a fax through to West Africa, down the road there. Then we resorted to courier services. Courier services that are not owned by Africans, owned by forces that are opposed to Africa, they tell you that we cannot reach the Gambia. Let the Gambians go and take their courier from Dakar. Not only that, it is cheaper to send these courier services to Europe than to send it to Kenya next door. So I asked one of these uh, 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 brothers in the courier service that why should it cost me 50,000 Uganda shillings, which is 50 US dollars, to send this thing to Tanzania. And it cost me 27,000 Uganda shillings to send it to London or to send it to New York. So, ah, but you see, there are more frequent uh, 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 flights between London. No, they aren't. There are only about three or four. There is a flight every day between Nairobi and, uh, and uh, at least two of them. But the, the, the bottom line of it is that it is not an economy that we control. It's an economy that is controlled by others and shaped in the interests of others. Those are the realities that we need to confront. And how to break them down should be our responsibilities. The Pan-African movement 
was originated by individuals, but individuals with a difference. They cared enough to sacrifice their time and energy to make sure that our people meet with a focus. I did not think Dr. Dobibi Dubua was elected by anybody to convene all those five congresses. Kwame Nkrumah got the mandate later. George Padmo was never even any elective post. I think we must shy away from some of these bourgeois conceptions of democracy that says until somebody makes a tick against your name, they cannot act. What we need to do is to find ways these individuals have started something, the result of which we are the ones we are here, and see how we can broaden the scope and the context you know, of what they have been able to do. But this cynical, petty bourgeois attitude you know, should not be part of the Pan-African movement. It has been a, 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 a committee guided by just one principle. Do you agree that we should hold this Congress? Are you willing to work for it? Then let's do it together. It has not been all harmony in the IPC. But then Kwame Nkrumah reminds us an organization is not a refuge. It is a center of struggle. There are different views, personalities, ideologies, and interests. But the bottom line must be the unity of our people, both at home and in the continent, and, uh, and uh, both at home and abroad, and also a unity of, uh, of, uh, of action. The last Congress, as you may all recall, took place 20 years back. Of even greater significance to the last between the 6th and 7th Congresses, however, is a challenge that confronts the African people today. The Congresses of the past concerned themselves with the problems of slavery, colonialism, and neocolonialism. Today, we are to deal with re-enslavement re and recolonization. The situation that confronts us is thus similar to that of someone who having been beaten by the rain and got a place to dry himself or herself up is faced with the prospect of being pushed back into the rain. This is a situation that not only calls for a new approach, but also one that is of immediate practical response. So, as we converge for this 7th Pan-African Congress, I call upon all of you to stay clear of posturing and permit the African people to get down to the actual business of tackling their problems. On behalf of the IPC and the Secretariat, I welcome you to the 7th Park and hope we have a very fruitful Congress.